Hai, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Apa khabar semua? So, hari ini kita akan buat satu langkaji yang bertajuk oxidative phosphorylation. Kan student Madam Kiss uh, selalu mengadu tentang tak faham berkenaan oxidative phosphorylation dan suka untuk bezakan oxidative phosphorylation dengan substrate level phosphorylation dalam menghasilkan ATP. So, hari ini uh, Madam Kiss akan cuba untuk uh, buat summary dan fast revision berkaitan dengan oxidative phosphorylation. Okay. Dan hopefully, okay, kita dapat buat revision sama-sama dan beri kefahaman kepada you all. Okay. So, ini adalah gambar raja berkaitan dengan oxidative phosphorylation. Okay. Oxidative phosphorylation merupakan satu proses di mana lebih banyak ATP akan dapat dihasilkan Okay, ATP akan dituai daripada NADH dan FADH2 yang telah dihasilkan dalam grab cycle dan glycolysis serta limb reaction untuk menjadi ATP. Dan proses ini adalah proses yang berlaku dekat inner membrane of mitochondria. Okay, so first, okay, name two main process occur during oxidative phosphorylation. Okay, dalam oxidative phosphorylation, ada dua proses utama iaitu electron transport chain dan chemiosmosis. Okay, dan hari ini kita akan terangkan apa yang berlaku sewaktu electron transport chain dan apa pula yang berlaku sewaktu chemiosmosis. Okay, untuk electron transport chain, okay, namakan kompleks yang terbenam dalam permukaan inner membrane of mitochondria. Okay, dan Terdapat empat main kompleks iaitu kompleks 1, 2, 3 dan 4. Keempat-empatnya mempunyai nama yang tersendiri. Okey, iaitu kompleks 1, NADH dihidrogenis. Kompleks 2, saksinit dihidrogenis. Kompleks 3, cytochrom C reductase dan kompleks 4, cytochrom C oksidis. Dan kita juga ada dua mobile carrier. So, it is Q iaitu ubiquinone dan cytochrome C. Okay. Sebelum kita boleh bercerita tentang bagaimana elektron itu okay, is transfer from one complex to another complex, kita kena faham. Sumber uh, elektron itu datangnya daripada dua molekul yang berbeza. Okay, iaitu NADH dan juga yang kedua adalah FADH2. Okay, bagi molekul NADH, Okay, so kita kena tahu laluan, okay, the transfer of electron after, okay, molecule NADH ini mengalami oxidation menjadi NAD+. As we all know, when NADH undergo oxidation, it is going to produce NAD+, H+, together with electron. In the sequence, dia akan lalu complex 1, ubiquinone, complex 3, cytochrome complex dan complex 4. Okay. Tapi kalau Madam Kiss, okay, I would prefer you to mention the name of each and every complex. Okay. Tapi kalau tak boleh ingat, okay, macam mana kita cerita dalam slide sebelum ni, okay, you boleh just mention it as complex 1, complex 3 and complex 4 in the Roman okay, character. Alright. So this is the pathway of electron transfer for NADH. Okay. How about FADH2? Okay. FADH2 is not going to travel the same pathway as NADH. Okay, there's some differences. So, uh, look carefully. Okay, so FADH2 is also called as succinate. So, this succinate or FADH2, when it is undergoing oxidation, okay, it will release H plus and also electron. So, that electron is going to be transferred okay, to complex 2 or we call it as succinate dehydrogenase. From complex 2, okay, it is transferred to ubiquinone. Okay, next to complex 3, okay, cytochrome complex and complex 4. Okay, so what is the difference? Okay, perbezaan utama dia ialah, okay, apabila FADH2 yang mengandung oxidation dan transfer elektron, it does not involve complex 1. So, Question usually asks you to explain the process of electron transfer along ETC. Whether they are going to ask you to use NADH as example or FADH2. 
commonly an ADH. Okay, this is my guide. Okay, so there is four main things you have to explain when explaining about this process. Okay, in which it is oxidation of NADH. Okay, how does it occur? Okay, next, when electron have been produced. Okay, the pathway of electron transfer along the EDC. Okay, at the end of complex four. Okay, who is the last electron acceptor that will accept the electron, and what is the byproduct produced? And okay, that process is not just an Okay, by formation of H2O, since H2O is only the byproduct. Okay, and the main purpose of this EPC molecule lies over here. Okay, when the electron is transferred, there's some energy released to pump the H+. Let's do some uh, fast revision about proton pump. Okay, which molecule can act as your proton pump? Okay, proton pump, okay, adalah... Okay, sejenis protein yang embedded pada inner membrane yang boleh tolong pump H+, yang berada banyak pada matrix of mitochondria, pergi ke intermembrane space. Okay, and during the ETC, okay, this process, okay, will be aided by, okay, energy release from the electron transfer. So, complex 1, complex 3 and complex 4 able to act as proton pump. Okay, how about complex 2? Okay, it cannot be okay, the proton pump. Okay, why? Okay, because all these three uh, electron carrier complex is a transmembrane protein that fully embedded in the inner membrane of mitochondria and enable the process of active transport. Alright. So, okay, let us start by explaining okay, that four main things okay, in explaining the process of ETC. Okay, the first one tadi adalah oxidation of NADH. Okay, what you can say is NADH undergo oxidation, produce NAD+, plus, H+, plus, and electron. Okay, point number two. Electron, okay, is transferred to NADH dehydrogenase causing NADH dehydrogenase to become reduced. Okay, next. Okay, we are going to focus on the second point. How about the pathway of electron transfer? Okay, we know that, okay, in every transferation of electron, okay, the molecule that receives that electron is going to be reduced while the molecule that releases the electron, yang membebaskan electron tu akan oxidize. So, apa yang kita boleh katakan ialah sepanjang ETC, akan berlaku series of redox reaction. So, apa yang kita akan cakap? Electron, okay, point number three, electron from NADH dehydrogenase is transferred to ubiquinone, causing ubiquinone to be reduced, while NADH dehydrogenase will oxidize. Okay, next, okay, Electron from ubiquinone is transferred to several of electron carrier complex such as complex 3, cytochrome C, okay, and cytochrome C oxidase. Okay. Electron from ubiquinone is transferred to complex 3, okay, which is cytochrome C reductase. Okay. Cytochrome C and cytochrome C oxidase, which is compact form. Okay. The next point. Okay. Electron from cytochrome C oxidase okay, is transferred to the oxygen that act as the last electron acceptor. Oxygen is combined with hydrogen ion to form water. So, that is the completion of that three main point. Okay. And the last point, okay, how this H plus able to be transported from each and every proton carrier molecule, proton pump. Okay, so as the electron transfer from one complex to another complex, okay, energy is released. Energy is used to pump H plus ion 
from matrix of mitochondria to intermembrane space. So each NADH able to form three hydrogen ion to intermembrane space. How about FADH2? Okay, so there's different pathway for FADH2. Okay, for FADH2, we are going to use the same guide, okay, as previously. So first, we are talking about oxidation of FADH2. Okay, FADH2, okay, point number one, FADH2 is oxidized to form FAD, okay, H plus an electron. Next, electron is transferred to succinate dehydrogenase causing succinate dehydrogenase become reduced. Okay, point number three. Electron, okay, is then transferred to series of electron carrier complex such as ubiquinone, cytochrome C reductase and cytochrome C and cytochrome C oxidase. Okay, the fourth point. Okay, Electron from cytochrome C oxidase is transferred to the oxygen that acts as last electron acceptor. And oxygen will combine with H plus to form water. As the energy is transferred from one molecule to another molecule, energy is released. And energy is used to pump. H plus ion from matrix of mitochondria to intermembrane space. For each FADH2, okay, two hydrogen ion can be pumped to intermembrane space. So that is the end of uh, electron transport chain for both molecule NADH and FADH2. Alright, let us proceed with chemiosmosis. Okay, so macam yang kita bincangkan tadi, okay, dekat ETC, dia telah menyebabkan banyak H plus dipump dari matrix of mitochondria pergi ke intermembrane space. So, dekat intermembrane space, there is a lot of H plus ion now that create the proton gradient or we also call it as proton multipost. Macam mana FOS ini akan digunakan untuk menghasilkan ATP dan dia akan melalui the last complex yang kita nampak dalam gambar rajah yang kita panggil sebagai ATP sintes. Okay, so here Madam Keys uh, choose this diagram. Okay, so the purple structure is called as ATP sintes. So we have two region here. Okay, this is intermembrane space that has high concentration of H+. And also this is matrix of mitochondria. Okay, the white structure is inner membrane of mitochondria. So, in explaining chemiosmosis, okay, there is four main things that you have to highlight in the explanation. Okay, which are, okay, characteristic of inner membrane of mitochondria. Yang kedua ialah, macam mana proton multifos itu boleh terbentuk. Yang ketiga, Okay, macam mana proton multipos tadi boleh menyebabkan ion akan mengalami proses flowback. Okay, dari intermembrane space ke matrix of mitochondria dan akhirnya bagaimana okay, ATP boleh terhasil. So, let us start. Okay, as we all know, the characteristic of inner membrane of mitochondria is impermeable to H plus ion. Dia tak telak kepada H plus ion. So, H plus ion yang dah berkumpul banyak tadi, dia tak boleh okay, diffuse melalui inner membrane nak pergi balik kat matrix secara simple diffusion. So, apa yang berlaku? Okay, when the inner membrane of mitochondria is not permeable to H plus ion, okay, dan at intermembrane space, higher concentration of H plus ion akan create proton motif force. Okay, bila ada force, maknanya ada daya tolak kan? So, what proton motif force will do? Okay, proton motif force will force the H plus ion to flow back from intermembrane space to matrix of mitochondria via the ATP synthesis. Okay, 
So, as the H plus ion flow back, okay, from intermembrane space to matrix of mitochondria, it is exergenic process that releases energy. So, that energy is used to phosphorylate ADP to form ATP. What does phosphorylate mean? Maknanya ADP daripada molekul ada dua fosfat, kita akan tambah satu fosfat molekul dan menjadi ATP. Okay. So that is the process of chemical osmosis. Simple, right? Okay, and the last question. Okay, why 38 ATP can be produced? Just now, okay, kita dah cakap dekat glycolysis hanya terasa dua. Link reaction tak ada. Okay, manakala dalam crab cycle hanya terasa dua secara substrate level phosphorylation. So where does another 34 ATP came from? Okay, we have simple assumption here. Each and ADH is going to produce 3 ATP while each FADH2 is able to produce 2 ATP. Since overall from glycolysis and Krebs cycle, we are able to produce 10 and ADH and 2 FADH2. So 10 times 3, okay, we get 30 ATP from an ADH while 2 FADH2 that produced during Krebs cycle times 2 ATP okay, will produce 4. So total up from oxidative phosphorylation, we are going to get 34 ATP. Okay, that's all for today's discussion. Sampai kita jumpa lagi dalam perbincangan yang seterusnya. Selamat mulang haji. Assalamualaikum.